Okay, got the red smoke. Roger. Gun run. North and south. West of the smoke. West of the smoke. Okay, copy. West of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, wait a minute. Give it to me. I need it. Get cleared hot. Copy, cleared hot. You ready Boy. for the key start to podcast? You got to clap. No, I have to clap, but it's good. Can I clap too? It's good that you clap too. All right. Uh, and the reason why, so I just <laughs> added the video component to it, and it's tough. Um, the video, the camera microphone is terrible. The audio from this is great. So yeah. you have to line up the audio from this with the video. So if you clap, it makes a big spike. Check. And then it'll spike on the camera, so you line the two up, trim it, sense. get out of here. That makes sense. <sighs> You're a smart guy. I am not a smart guy. <laughs> you know me well enough to know that I am not a smart guy. What I do is I listen to people that are smarter than me, which in my case is that's what smart everybody people do. do. That's what smart people do. <sighs> no, I, so I wrote a page actually today on my book. I was like, what do successful people do? <sighs> what, what, and I only could come up with like three or four things, and I, and I, I thought I had like a million ideas. But you did not. And then, well, I, I don't know. Like, I just I have bad memory. <laughs> What were the three or four you came down with? <laughs> Definitely write things down. I couldn't it, agree more with that. Write everything down. And, no. I, you know, I, I used to do that. I used to write everything down, and like, from school and, like, just art school and everything. School, yep. Like, just having notebooks. and stuff. I used to write everything down. <clears throat> and then I kind of fell away from it. And then, like, the last few months, like, year maybe or so, I was like, my, everything just started, like, getting away from me. Yeah. You know? And then I started writing things down again, and everything just like came. It just like cleaned up my life. I'm like, how does writing? And I'm not a good writer. Like, I just write it to write it. Like, yeah. There's no um, rhyme or reason behind it. I've heard, especially when it comes to learning, like my sons, a 15 year old and a 13 year old, they do so much learning on electronic devices. And from what I've read, I, I have a struggle. Like when I read books, I really struggle to retain anything that I read digitally. The paper, for whatever reason, the tactile sensation. And writing things down from what I've been able to find the the research, in air quotes, depending on, I don't know who the person doing the research is, but it's, uh, you retain things better if you More actually effective. write it down. So I wonder, is that like true for your kids too? Like next generation? Is that just us old? I don't know. Older folk. I do not know. Um, I don't think, I don't think we have enough time with the devices to truly know the the impact. But if you dig into it, and the only reason I am is because I think it's safe to say, uh, I would say both of my boys, my daughter to a lesser degree, like they, they have an attachment to devices. <laughs> like I'll tell them like, like, Hey, turn the TV off. They're like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> YouTube on their phone. I'm like, <laughs> but give me your phone. And then they're like, fine. Netflix on their Xbox. <laughs> I, I can't, it's just a drug device to device. I can't stop them. <laughs> And so and I was like, okay, what's going on? This can't be good. And most of the research I can find is that the screen time, is it's not great, but I don't think they know whether or not in the long term it's going to negatively impact their cognitive, cognitive development. So TBD, hmm. nobody knows, remains to be. Huh. I like writing stuff down. So I do, I do a good amount of public speaking, and every time before I will do a speech, even if it's a topic that I've covered before and it's like an identical request from the client, I will write out the entire speech, and it helps solidify what I'm going to say. That's one key thing that I have found helps me. I don't know if it helps everybody, but for me, the physical writing it is huge. So uh, you were writing before this, right? Try to like get this all before this podcast. No, I've known <laughs> you long enough. We can just wing this one because totally. I got nothing but questions. Because you're a fascinating <laughs> individual, which is the point of the podcast to sit down and talk with fascinating individuals. Which is easy because I can just pester you with questions and you have to ask <laughs> because that's the way this works. Wait, is this working? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what else did you write down? Successful people. Um, that they exercise. Agreed. Another good one. They. Even though I bet you we could find examples of people that don't. I, and I thought about that too. I thought about that. But And I'm sure there's a lot of people that exercise that aren't successful. <laughs> Also, yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, yep. if you go to any prison yard, I'm sure like all those guys are working out every day. I wouldn't have made that analogy, but I like where your head's at. Yeah, <laughs> they're not that successful. <laughs> it's true. Well, they have time on their hands. <laughs> they do. Yeah, um, <clears throat> exercising. You know, just basic general like health and wellness. Yeah, you know, being aware of it and just trying to like live kind of a healthy life. You're pretty. Uh, so watching you, like an active life. Yeah, you're. You've been. Uh, I would say. 
the health aspect. If I judging based off your social media, I'd say the last eighteen months, it seems like you've dove in deeper into your desire for a healthy lifestyle. Like the yoga, I see you posting like sweat every day. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love it. Like, cause people ask me all the time, how do you train? I'm like, most of the time I don't have time to train. I wish I could say I trained every day. I literally just try to make myself sweat once a day, which isn't awesome if it's a five minute workout. But what's really not awesome is not working out for eight days because then I feel like I can't start. And then it's like, you know what? I should probably eat chocolate cake to make myself feel better. And it's <laughs> like, that just doesn't work. But that's no. what I do. Yeah. Or then a hamburger and then a milkshake is usually chocolate cake, hamburger, milkshake. I'm cookies. Cookies are like, yeah, I'm crazy for cookies. But you're active. So yeah. I'm talking about when I'm not active. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what got you? Have you always been like that? A little bit. Like, maybe not as intense as like the last year what kicked you into high gear um well <laughs> about a year ago i had heart surgery not for any reason that i was unhealthy before that but it was afib so afib D describe that because you're already past my knowledge base okay it's basically like an electrical problem with your heart uh no real rhyme or reason you know there's theories of like why you know why people get it and stuff but was yeah, it lifelong? I, Is it something you just I, genetically had? It, no, um, it just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah, it pop and it can do that. It can just you can just like kind of. So your heart was totally healthy, and then and then it just started beating, just irregularly, like just crazy, like like animal on the drums. <laughs> so you would like notice you were just laying down, and your heart was going crazy. Uh, not so much just laying down. So this is something. I don't think if I was as active or, you know, if I just didn't do anything. A sedentary just lifestyle? Yeah, I would have never known. But, you know, I went out for a run, and I'm like 200 feet, and I'm like, oh, my God. So you were long distance running, like, 200 feet. It's like that <laughs> ultra long distance for me. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> like, you know, I, g I make it to, like, the stop sign, and I'm like, I stop running. I'm like, whoa, 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 something's wrong, you know? Like, I don't, I don't quite understand. And then I even went, I was like, you know, whether it was the gym or, like, yoga, I, I was at Bikram Yoga. And I'm like, all of a sudden, in the warm-up pose, like the first minute, yeah. I'm like laying down on the ground, like, oh my God, I'm about to pass out. I don't know what's going on. So it took a couple of weeks of that to happen until I was like, hmm, maybe I should go to the doctor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How do they fix it? There's several different ways you can fix it. The way they fixed it for me was uh, surgery, a surgical procedure. It's called... Uh, a cath ablation, catheter ablation. Okay. They basically just poke holes in your femoral artery and by your and, and they just shove tubes up. Oh, through they there. Sort of went through your leg. They went through so my leg. So you were probably conscious. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't think I would ever be a fan of that. Like oh even though God. you guys could do this while I'm conscious, can you please hook me up and like a little? Yeah. Can I have a little bit of night night sauce? <laughs> yeah. No, I was asking when I was under, um, when I got rolled into the table, into the operating room, I actually asked that. I was like, you know, we we're talking about, about that. And, and someone said like, no, people, people do this procedure awake. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not going to be awake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I don't want, and they're like, no, 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 you're, you're, we're, you're going to sleep. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. And it was a four or five hour procedure. Wow. And they just like cauterize your, they burn your heart. They burn the nerves and the tissue that are basically kind of sending out these erratic uh, so is a misfire signals. in the electrical it's system mi misfire in the electrical system happens a lot like actually like the nickname is athlete's heart i don't know but you could like babies can have it old people like everybody athlete's so. heart because athletes maybe work their heart harder i, I think there was a period where they saw they f saw a lot of uh long distance runners okay. swimmers uh you know Cross country skiers, they were they were popping into AFib. Hmm. Um, so I think it kind of got the nickname from that. But but yeah. really, like anybody can can get it, fall into it. It it's a possibility. My theory is the long like from what I've learned, like definitely because I was a big runner before. Yep. For sure that you know is is a possibility. And have you ever worn a heart rate monitor when you're skydive? I have like, actually. It's really interesting. How so? Like, at least for my, maybe, maybe I just freak out more than most people. Mine stays like, relatively kind of baseline. Huh. There's no way that you should have an elevated heart rate with the experience that you do. Not I on a normal basis, but like when things 
go like if little things go wrong like the things that like on a jump that are like oh my and then define little things for you because little thing for you on a jump and little thing for me on a jump might be different things <laughs> given the difference in experience level <laughs> okay so the the time i wore the the heart rate monitor i was in moab utah yep. and we're with the, with my team rebel air force and miles and everybody which is a section of the dod <laughs> most people don't know about they don't know that rebel <laughs> has an air force it's the it is. army navy air force marine space force Red Bull Air Force. So there's actually seven branches. Yeah. We're, yeah. <laughs> That's it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I actually um, stole that from Miles because he, he was getting asked by, he was like, somebody was asking him, oh, did you ever serve? He's like, yes, sir, in the Red Bull Air Force. I <laughs> died laughing. Of course, he was told him that he was joking, but I'm like, I'm stealing that from you. <laughs> <laughs> people think about it. All. Like, yeah. I actually, people legitimately, like, they're like, no, really? Red Bull, wait. Air, so you're in the Air Force, or wait, what does Rebel have to do with that? They get confused by that name sometimes. Like you're better off in that situation to saying yes and walking yeah. away. <laughs> say yes and just leave. Yeah. Yeah. I usually just say I'm on the Rebel skydiving team, you know, to, to like a woofo. Yeah. It's like, that explains what I, what I do. But anyway, it, yeah. we were there, yep. U- Utah, and I was wearing this this monitor, and we're at, you know, higher elevation. I don't know, four, 5,000, 6,000 feet maybe above no, sea yeah. level. And actually, we're in Castle Valley more specifically. And um, jumping out of a helicopter with a, a Petra one, uh, Petra 64, which is like... For you know, people who aren't listening, Petra is a... Who makes Icarus? Yeah, is that, New Zealand. It's a New skydiving Zealand. wing that goes over your head. 64 is the square footage size. Let's just say that's on the smaller side of the house for... The smaller Canopy, side. yes. I'm yeah. sure there are people who jump smaller... Uh, We'll get in. I'm gonna obviously we'll dive into the skydiving stuff later, so we can get there. But it's a very high performance canopy for extremely experienced jumpers. Yeah, very very few. I mean, there's not a a large market. <laughs> yeah, they probably make ten a year. <laughs> yeah, actually, I got a new wing, and it was they made fifty. The Slayer, I got there's um, oh, I number twenty eight yeah. of fifty. I was like, oh, they only made fifty <laughs> of these. That's it. Yeah. Um. So anyway. Small parachute. I got like thirty extra pounds on me. You know, weight belt, which improves your performance under the wing and makes it you go faster. Makes yep. you go way faster. Yeah. And it's freezing. It's winter, and it's like one of the coldest days of my life. <laughs> it was. It was like one of the coldest <laughs> jumps ever. And um, I, I jump. We're, we're doing this jump. Was this for a commercial? For it's actually if you go on YouTube and check out uh, Red Bull Chain Reaction. That was the final yeah. product. It was like this whole thing. I'll put a link to that in Kirby the podcast and, episode. And all the team and airplanes and helicopters and we kind of like – and race cars too. And anyway, we do our thing in free fall and I roll over to open my parachute and I immediately – I'm like, where the hell am I? <laughs> I'm like, oh <laughs> my God. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not lost. Yeah. But I'm just not near my landing area and there's nowhere. I mean like nowhere to land. So it, all right. So we got to describe this further because the world is a drop zone, <laughs> unless you have a canopy that is small and so fast <laughs> that you can't shut it down. Like um, a base rig, for example, like a big two eighty, you could stuff that on a postage stamp. You could yeah. bring it in vertically. Yeah. So for people listening or thinking about this, that's not the canopy you're jumping. So you need space because you have to land this ultra fast wing. It's like an airplane yeah, slowing with no down. Power. Yeah, you need yeah. to have a certain amount of runway. And that's not awesome when you're looking down at boulders and micro terrain and valleys. Yeah. Which is basically what I'm assuming you were looking down at. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you know, <laughs> like if, if you've ever been to, you've been to Moab. Yeah. It's insane. It's like the moon. Yeah. You it's, know, super but red. Hi, it's super high desert. It's like Mars. Moon. Yeah. Like, yeah. So right at that moment when I was just like, oh, my God. I'm, and my plan was my, if, if I had – if I wasn't able to make the landing area, I had a plan. I was going to ditch the weight belt, cut – I was going to cut away yep. and open my reserve because it's twice the size. It's a 128 yep. reserve. I'm like – Which makes a huge difference so that was like, in that environment. I was going to like, all right, I might survive landing in here. with. Yeah. In that moment, my heart rate spiked so hard instantly. <laughs> in, it was like it was like <laughs> sitting on the couch to like sprints, yeah. you know. And and then the minute, like ten, five seconds later, I'm like, oh, I got this. I totally got it. I can yep. see like my glide angle, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to barely make it, but I'm going to make it. My heart rate just went like straight back down again. Yeah. So I just wonder like how many times, I mean, 25 years of skydiving, 20,000 skydives. How many times is this like, yeah. you don't really experience that, you know, on a regular basis, like in life, like doing other yeah. like 
you know, driving to work or whatever. I would say know? jumping for me, the time, I bet you, I haven't worn a heart rate monitor a bunch, but I would bet the times that my heart rate was the highest would be when I was teaching other people and <laughs> worried about their performance. Like, I'm not necessarily, I, I'm sure you would probably agree, like, if you get 10 years into the sport and you're active, um, you're probably not worried about cutting away your main parachute anymore because you've probably experienced it and you go, okay, like, this isn't that big of a deal. These are designed to open. If I execute my procedures, I'm going to be okay. So you probably have a few cutaways. So if that happens, you're prepared for it. You've seen a lot of stuff, but then, you, like, teaching brand new people how to jump or a buddy of yours or somebody that you care about, <laughs> and you're sitting there like, oh, my, I have to let go of you during this jump. And you're just like, whoo, 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 let go. <laughs> and then just start the, the freaking whirly gig, like, ah! Like, I guarantee you my heart rate was through the roof on that. But it's not for a concern for me. It's for a concern for somebody else. But your heart's still going through It's the spiking same. because yeah. I'm fa- afraid for that person because they don't know how much trouble they're in. They just have a smile that I can see <laughs> blurring as they're spinning like a top. Ah, this is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is extreme. <laughs> oh, man. The military jumps. You wanna, I, mean, I mean, you've obviously been out there to some of the courses and throwing the rucksack on these guys and being responsible for saving their life when they start a whirly gig they cannot get out of. It's not an awesome feeling. I'm yeah. probably I'm actually probably at peak heart rate on the ramp before the jump begins, just sh- <laughs> shaking it out, getting ready to do the bolt. Like, oh. and the guy's just like, ha ha ha, this is gonna be awesome. I'm like, oh, I hope hope more so for you than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I actually remember watching. Was the chain reaction? Was that for a car? Um, was there a was car a, aspect in yeah, there? Yeah, actually, it was. It was an yeah. Audi. <laughs> it was. Yeah, a, so I think ultimately it was an Audi commercial, or yeah. or they funded it. They collaborate. They partnered up with red bull because you had kirby out there doing corkscrews yeah he's right? corkscrewing around us while we were flying the wingsuit and he's like aerobatic yeah, which corkscrews just, around. I'll, I'll just link to it and people yeah. can watch it it's bananas the stuff that your guys team does it's pretty crazy so 25 years of jumping oh my 24 i, I, yeah. I exaggerate a little bit though. it's like i mean it's close enough <laughs> you know and twenty thousand jumps yeah yeah That's that is quite a bit how did you start jumping how did you go from Jeffro? I have never jumped. Point break. Stop it. Fly like an eagle, Johnny? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the best movie ever. I'm not going to lie. It was. And Swayze's doing his own stunts out the door. I mean, <laughs> the Swayze. G. I what know. G. I mean, like, <laughs> man. That's one dude I never got to meet or jump with. And I heard. I, I wish I. From the people who I have heard who uh, had interactions with him, they were all positive. Yeah. I've yet to hear anything negative. Same. That's all I've yeah. heard. Yeah. So you watch Point Break. Well, I mean, let's go back even farther. Where'd you grow up? I grew up uh, outside New York City. Yep. Yeah. Suburbs. And, you know, I was, I was always like drawing and painting. I was really into art and skateboarding, BMX, stuff like that. Just like, I always, always enjoyed all like all sports yeah um but i was definitely more into skiing snowboarding <laughs> skateboarding in new york is there a lot well, of that? vermont you know it, okay. i used to drive vermont up uh, by the rich kids <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh, i'm actually not sure if there's rich kids uh, yeah, yeah. it just sounded like the right thing to say <laughs> yeah. it's it's an awesome state actually vermont i mean it wasn't so damn cold um in the winter time yeah it's really beautiful up there i, I just did a cool project this last fall in Vermont and got to jump over the foliage. Oh, that's got to be awesome. Like As it was way, changing way colors. northern Vermont, too. Yep. Like, just, it, I mean, yeah, like, the peak of it. I mean, a day later, it was, like, over. The wind came, rain came, leaves were, like, half the leaves came off the trees in, like, a n- one night. Changed the landscape completely. So fast. It was crazy. So, timing the... You know, a production crew, a bunch of jumpers. That's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah, and it was like, okay, wait, next week. No, never mind. Three weeks from now, it'll be peak. You know, and the dates kept moving, and then it was like, all right, everyone book their tickets. Is the project out? Yeah. What's it called? I got a link to all this Uh, stuff so people can watch it. That one, just called False uh, False Whoopers. Wasn't as big of a production, I'd say, as um, uh, Chain Reaction. Yep. Chain reaction, you know, had the whole team involved and everything. everybody like Miles was doing gainers off the what do they call that thing the the Fisher Tower Fisher Tower there yeah. it is yeah. yeah shocker Miles Gainer yeah opening uh, dirty low oh, <laughs> I was standing uh, at the bottom watching I was like oh oh my god <laughs> that's a topic in and of itself that <laughs> he's such an awesome dude <laughs> all right so you watch your New York you're growing up so yeah so yeah. I was just always like yeah just 
chasing these like more adventure type sports as a kid even you know of course point break comes out oh yeah mtv sports i don't remember you yep. remember that dan cortez yep by the way like i've been trying to reach out find that guy i just want to <laughs> thank him for like inspiring <laughs> my life yeah he was awesome setting you on your I course send him, I, I tried de- throwing him some dms he doesn't. He doesn't even look at him. I believe you they can call see that, like it says scene. Yeah, I mean, he didn't see it. I believe they call that sliding into his. I DMs. was trying to slide into yeah. his DMs. There. I don't actually know what that means, but I've heard people say that. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. So. So yeah, I mean that was it, and and I mean that was like Point Break. I was like, oh my god. And so me and a couple of buddies from high school were like, oh, we got we have to try this. So you know, summer break. Yep. Like yellow pages, you know, no Google or anything yeah. yet. Yellow pages, we're like, oh, we're skydiving. Oh, there's a place an hour and a half from here. Let's go. It was the ranch. Yep. In Gardner, New York. So myself, three of my buddies from high school, we went and made it, made a jump. And tandem, I, I'm assuming. Tandem. All yep. of us. Yeah, we had to sit around all day, too, till like 2 o'clock because it was like raining in the yep. morning. Then the clouds broke, and it was, I think it was, that almost sold me to continue was this experience flying parachutes through these canyons in the cloud. Yeah. Like, I'm like, like this world exists up here. Like, this is insane. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I'm like, what? Yeah. What year is this too? 95. Okay. 95. So, so yeah, I, when I landed, I mean, and I was really scared. I mean, I was not, you know, like tough guy jumping at all i mean i was no. like sh- nervous like to the 100 percent. as most people are they yeah. may say that they're not <laughs> but as the ti when you strap in and you feel <laughs> you're like uh, okay i know what's going on here yeah <laughs> oh man no it was i was uh yeah that was me 100 <laughs> percent. i think <laughs> it's probably even like a beyond more nervous than most people to be honest like to yeah. be honest i'm like how can anybody be but anyway, uh, landed and was just like, oh my, and my tandem instructor was like, hey man, nice jump. Okay. I got, he was on a back to back backup load. So he's like, oh, oh, don't go anywhere. I'll be back in 20 minutes. I'm doing this, you know, taking this other guy. I was like, cool. And I just went for a walk for 20 minutes, like out in the forest and stuff. And I was just like, what, what just happened? I had to like, kind of just needed like a minute yeah. to like let the adrenaline settle and just like take it, it all in. Well, it's an overwhelming, uh, that's probably the most common thing with people I see taking people for their first jump there. Uh, there's so much sensory and tactile input that they get to the ground and you can tell that their hard drive is blasted. <laughs> they're completely full fried. The out. Apple scroll wheels are going. They're just like, ah, <laughs> that was so awesome. And, but oh, it, the rainbow wheel? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. spinning. And they, <laughs> but they're happy, but their sensation cup is so tipped over and just dumped out <laughs> that yeah. they need some time to, to come back out of orbit. Yeah, that was me. That was me. I needed some time. How'd your and two buddies like it? One of them liked it a lot. They all liked it. <clears throat> yeah. We all liked it. I just, uh, I was the only one who was like, I'm going to, well, actually, one buddy came back and did level one with me, AFF. But, yep. Uh, and, then, and then he stopped. But, um... I I just I I was I couldn't <laughs> from that day from that jump you knew that that was the path for you that was it I don't know if I knew it was the path but I just knew I had to do an I think I just knew I had to do one more jump and then after that one I was like all right let me do this like one more time and it was just like you know because when they gave you they give you your first log book yeah it's like enough to fill up a hundred jumps the yeah. little blue one the little exactly it was a little blue one. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, man, I'm looking through, like, seeing how many pages are in it when I first – and I'm like, oh, there's, like, 100 pages in I'll it. I'll never fill this thing I'll up. I'll never fill this thing up. But every time I landed, I was, like, pretty sure I wanted to go back and do it again. And I was broke. I was, like, in college, in New York City, art school, like, just no money. And, you know, so I basically would do one jump a week. I go work, deliver pizza. I work Which at is a ad super agency. hard way to make it through AFF. Oh God, yeah. This let's pre wind tunnel time. You're trying to learn. You could get a to describe to people. Imagine sitting in a classroom with a whiteboard, and you learn about a whole bunch of stuff. And there's no way to actually practice it the way it's going to feel like there is now, where you can just get in the wind tunnel. Yeah. You go into an airplane, and you have about 60 seconds to either do it correctly or not. It's one of the most challenging learning environments I think that there is. Yeah, and then do AFF in two months. Yeah, that's not the way to go. Most people do it in a weekend so they can go <laughs> jump to jump to jump to jump. <laughs> yeah, so they can learn and, like, apply those lessons real time real, yeah. real quick. Yeah, no, I would I would do a jump, and then I'd have all week to just, like, 
hype myself out about the next jump and just, you know, get all anxious <laughs> over it and just freak out. And then by the time I'd show up to do the next jump, I was just shitting in my pants like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Would you would you say you were a good AFF student or a bad <laughs> I was, like, mediocre. Yeah. I was, like, in the middle. I had to repeat one level. Which one? I, had, I, I did, too. It was, too. like, level three or four. It was one of the ones where you had to um, – Probably they, do the turns? The turns. I had to repeat the exact same one where the instructor lets go and you have to turn, and I just couldn't do it. I could turn, but – and I didn't. I just kind kind of drifted to a stop. Like yeah. I did an extra turn, maybe or two. It wasn't a, like a spin. You know, it was yeah. like, oh my god, he's out of control. Go save him. Just wasn't precise. It, it, yeah, and he didn't. But nobody really. I didn't really understand that you had like counter input. Uh, you know, you put an input in to move in a direction. We have to counter and do an opposite input to stop that yeah. movement. So I just, you know, Kept I just going. carried that momentum and just kind of like slowly came to a stop. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, we're going to do this jump again. I was like, dude, awesome. that's like 200 more bucks. See you next week. Damn. <laughs> I had to borrow 200 bucks from a guy I was working with to repeat mine because I had oh, yeah. just <laughs> enough money for AF up. So I had to borrow 200 bucks from a buddy. Oh, that's awesome. It not, like, no, it's actually oh, not so you, awesome. Do you, wait, no, that's awesome. You had a buddy there. To, I didn't have any buddies I could yeah. throw 200 bucks at me at the time. <laughs> I did not learn free fall in the military. Oh, I didn't know that. So I went to static line, which was part of the pipeline, and – went from my heels to the back of my head multiple times and said, this sucks. And then had a boss who just loved doing jumping. So we had two weeks of air ops and he loved it because they were riding to 13.5 in a C-130 and I was exiting at 800 feet on a round parachute over and over and over again. And so I'm looking for my femur and ankles on the ground after <laughs> I land. And they're coming down hooting and hollering and telling me all these tales of the things that happened in free fall. And I said, screw this shit. And I went and found Skydive San Diego and went through yes. FF. That's awesome. And then I ended up challenging the military course. Uh, I don't know. I had about 500 jumps, I think, when I went back through. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. So that's how I became military free fall qual was through paying for it on my own because I wanted to. I could have waited, but it was my choice. But it was like, I was like, I'm, I, the, on the C-130, the left-hand side as you're getting in was the static line. The right-hand side was the free fall. You're probably like the only person that – like. In the military that ever went and did that? Uh, there was more people in my class. But, but like, went out on their own to pay for it. Like, even knowing, like, yeah, you're I just going to do this for free. I was tired of being on the left-hand side of the aircraft because it hurt far too much. Yeah. And, yeah, this the right-hand side seemed like the better one to be on. So I just said, screw it, and dove into it. I loved it. After, I was like, all right, this is kind of my jam. I like this. Oh, yeah. What, what do you have, like, 4,000 jumps? Like, you know, uh, just over 7,000. 7,000? 7, yeah. Wow. Yeah, not, but Dude. I've been jumping about the same amount of time as you, so yeah. it it's not that good. I go, wow, when you tell me how many jumps you have, because 20,000 is a lot. But you work yeah, in the sport. I try to tell people, 7,000, they go, oh, wow. And I'm like, yeah, but if you work in the sport, like 7,000 is going to be on the lower end. I'm like a, I'm a casual jumper, and I jump far less now that I'm up in Montana. But, I mean, I filled up that seven pretty good. I've had yeah. some interesting experiences. That's a lot of Out, jumping. Yeah, outside of the barriers of an aircraft. <laughs> I mean, it's still, even if each jump only took, you know, 30 minutes of your time. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of minutes. Right it there. is. <laughs> well, and again, multiply that to by three. You know, 30 minutes, meaning the plane ride up. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, 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 well, multiply process. my experience by three at its approach. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's a lot. So you get through <laughs> AFF, and then at what point did you just go – both feet in the bucket. You know, I I wanted to. I was I was like, so I, I recruited. You know, Amy Shimalecki. Yeah. So. Oh, that's right. You guys had. Yeah, you guys we, both started at the ranch, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking for a buddy, like who's gonna drive up to the ranch and like <laughs> who's crazy enough to go skydiving with me? And I'm like, Amy. <laughs> you know, she was like she was like a rat. She was ripping on a snowboard. Like I was just like, all right, Amy's the one for yep. sure. She'll go. She's down. So I went went to her job she was working at a deli and i went and bugged, and i was like hey amy you want to go skydiving tomorrow and she's like oh, hell yeah <laughs> i was like that that was easy yeah and so that was it i kind of recruited her and then she she was hooked she was hooked she wanted yeah. to go up every, now every weekend we were going you know together just doing were you guys jumping together too just doing uh, fun jumps to you n not yet i mean you know because it took two months to go through aff <laughs> we, we didn't quite get there yet she was on the same aff program as i was yeah more or less, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we we continued jumping, and 
Now, you know, let's fast forward um, to a year later, maybe about a year or two down the road. And now we're jumping together. Now Amy and I are jumping together and, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to finish school. And I, I just have this brilliant idea like, hey, Amy, let's drop out of school and just go skydive all the time. <laughs> like, let's just do it now. Like, we're wasting our time at school when we could be just doing this. And she was like, no, no that's – like, she was like, dude, that's a bad idea. Bad like, idea, We're Lord. almost done. Like, we're – this is our third year. We got one more year and you, you'll have a degree, yep. a bachelor's degree. One more year. Just suck it up. And, you know, and I was like, yeah, maybe you're right. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So thanks, Amy, for keeping me in college. I walked away with a degree yep. that I'll never use. But you have it. But I have it. And yep. you know what? It was, it was art school. So I, you know, I learned a lot about living a creative lifestyle and yeah. apply a lot of creativity into my job, I guess, now. So, so how long <laughs> until you got your first sponsor? First sponsor was around 2000. Yep. 2000 jumps or year 2000? Year 2000. Okay. It was Larson and Bruce Guard. Yep. They make altimeters. altimeters. Yep. Good ones, by the way. They're awesome. They're still my sponsor. Yep. And how many jumps did you have at the time? Uh, maybe just like creeping up around, a, you know, maybe around like a thousand. I don't know. Actually, what was your was uh, about a thousand? I would guess about a thousand jumps. And what was your jam? What were you getting into at the time? What discipline? Free flying. Oh, yeah. it yeah. was free flying and and swooping. From so how how would you describe free flying? Because this is three dimensional. Because most people think skydiving, they jump out and your belly's to the ground, which is not really free flying. You actually don't ever want to be in that position when you're free flying. Yeah. So think if you're That's listening, like two dimensional. Yeah, think if you're listening to this, anything else like vertical orientations, your head could be up, your head could be down, you could be at an extreme angle, you could be like sitting in a chair, and everything in between that's not belly flying. Pretty much, right? And you know what? Why not belly flying? Throw belly flying in there too, as long as just it's make sure it's planned, mixed up, and it's know? planned. Don't like you know for people listening. If you're on like a head down jump, don't go to your belly. It's, yeah, it's no. not going to end up well for you or other people. Yeah, that's a that's going to be a really drastic speed change. And you might not <laughs> get invited on subsequent jumps <laughs> if you live. It. <laughs> All right, so you were free flying, which is the discipline I pursued when I it just was It's the most fun. I was watching all the free fly chronicle videos yes. and like Alaska John and I'm just like, God, that guy. Yes. And I in my head I'm like, I wonder if he's from Alaska. And of course I met him later on obviously he's from Alaska. That was the first skydive video. I bought the, the Chronicles two VHS. On, on VHS. Yes. And I watched it like I, I mean, not exaggerating. I watched it a hundred times. Maybe oh, yeah. more. I mean probably most likely more. And then, why well, can't I remember the guy's name? The Charles Bryan. No, the German dude. Olaf. Yes, Olaf Zipser. Olaf Thank you. Zipser, yeah. And then when he started doing, it, like, whipping the space balls out, I'm, <laughs> my mind was blown. I'm yeah. like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. That that video, I watched that video, and I was like, I, I, I want, this is what I want. Yeah. I want this. And that's, that's what, you know, ultimately brought us out to Arizona. And so and I found those videos while I was in the Navy. So I'm sitting there going, <laughs> Oh my God, this is awesome. I only have Saturday and Sunday. And then I have to go back to my regular job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you're getting it in. I was getting know? it in. I was loving it. Uh, yeah, I was getting it. Just jumping with people who were way better than me. I was wildly over my head doing things you're I shouldn't. Going for, you know, yeah. that's so awesome here. Cause now it, like with social media, yeah. I get all these messages from people. They're like, dude, I want to be a Red Bull skydiver. And, do all the stuff you're doing. And I'm like, sweet. Yeah. Um, they're like, how do I do that? And I was like, Oh, how many jumps do you have? And I'm like, Zero. Oh, I don't jump. I'm like, <laughs> what? You know, every, like, I'm like, I don't know if it's like a millennial thing or what's going on here, this mentality, but I'm like, well, go make a jump first. Like, yeah. why, why are you like trying to map out this, you know, career where you're going to be 10 years. I mean, like I get it. Dream big yeah. goals. Yeah. But that's like that approach. Like those questions when people, Blast it's an irresponsible the, approach. It's I get the same thing on wingsuiting. I'm like, what? Like, I like, they're like, oh my gosh, I've never jumped, but will you teach me how to fly a wingsuit? It's like, no. Like, why don't you go to the drop zone and make a tandem? Yeah. Just see if you like it first. I was actually, I mean, I, I used to jump all the time. It's got to San Diego because of the proximity to my house. But I would hear occasionally people getting ready to do their first AFF jump, expressing the desire only to get to a wingsuit as fast as possible. And I was always very concerned for those people. I didn't jump a wingsuit until I had like 3,500 jumps. 
and it was still a little squirrely, <laughs> probably because I was jumping one that's way bigger than I should have been in. And I don't know if your A one, if the A one is supposed to be your first suit, right? The aura, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you had like five like jumps, Swift in a, or something. Five <laughs> jumps in an S bird and an S bird, and yeah. then this package showed up, and so obviously it was divine timing. So I threw that on. I don't recommend that procedure for anybody, but that's the way that I went. But it, I mean, that's thirty five hundred jumps took me ten years. Yeah, because I was. I mean, I wasn't jumping as much. I wasn't working in the sport. It was an ancillary skill for my job, and I just. I don't know what it is. I don't know if people think there's going to be instant gratification, but they, I also don't think they realize how dangerous it can be because it looks great. And I, this is the way I describe skydiving and base jumping. It's awesome until it's not. And when it's not, <laughs> it's really not. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. The consequences are steep. Most of the time you're lucky to get a life flight. Yeah. So. Yeah. So don't hit up Jeff Rowe and say I want no. to be a <laughs> No, it's just so weird. Like, I still think about it. It's just, like, so weird. And I'm like, just go to, you know, go make a jump, you know. And then, like, start skydiving and go move to a drop zone and be a packer. And that's how you're going to become Which a is what you skydiver. did, right? I mean, you basically like, totally it. dove that's in it. and just lived at the DZ. Lived at the DZ. You know, just immersed myself. In a legit myself. tent? Like in an actual, like, REI I, tent? I had a tent. I don't know if it was an REI tent, but, like, legit tent for about a month. Yep. Um, bunkhouse. I moved in. I was like, okay, I can't do this. And there was space in the bunkhouse. So I moved into the bunkhouse for, like, three months or so. And then I, I bought a, an old trailer, a leak. You couldn't move it. It wasn't like a trailer you drive around. It was like <laughs> they drug it. They drug it into this RV slot, and they were like, all right, uh, there it is. Like, you're not moving it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it leaked every time. Thank God it was Arizona. It didn't yeah. rain that much, but it leaked really bad. And I lived in that for seven years on the airport, you know. How'd you make the jump from New York to Arizona? How'd you find out about uh, Eloy, which is a freaking mecca? So before, you know, all the internet stuff, yeah. um, Parachutist Magazine, yeah. Airspeed, Arizona Airspeed, yep. the world champion skydiving team. This is their home. Like and year like, after year oh. of dominating skydiving yeah. team and you flip every page in parachutes especially at that time it was like every other page was like photo by mike mcgowan photo by mike <laughs> mcgowan photo and you're like and every picture was like photo by over skydive arizona i yeah. was like oh my god this is this is the place amy this is where we need to go and we like yeah let's road trip so she's still into it deep at this point she's too. still into it yeah nice. we plan a road trip that that summer we planned a road trip from new york to florida to you know la and basically and then stopped in Arizona and stayed there for about six weeks and actually like got a job packing. Yep. Like I, I, I was like, Hey, is there a job? Like I'll clean toilets. I don't care. Like I want to stay here for my summer. Amy wanted to stay there too. And we went and found jobs. Amy got a job at the truck stop. She was working at, actually she worked at uh waffle house for like a week, quit and then got a job at tr TA <laughs> like waitressing at the TA in Eloy. Yeah. In 95 or 96 or whatever, 97 maybe. It's like 96, 97. I'm like, and I'm, you know, I'm like, hey, can you give me a job? And they're like, do you know how to pack? No. And they're like, oh, no, sorry. And Ten minutes later, the Brigida, she was like the manager at the school, at the school in Eloy at the time. She's like, oh, hey, come back. You know what? We'll just teach you how to pack parachutes and you can pack for the school. I was like, yes. Yep. First job in this skydiving. First job in skydiving. <laughs> and it was like, that was the dream. Amy and I, we just, you know, and it's just like, oh, man, I've been on like that whole thing about just setting goals and all this, but it's like, that's right there. You just got to go after it sometimes, yeah. you know, and not, you know, not worry about, you know, just put one foot forward and just keep going. Right. Like yep. not worrying about becoming on the Red Bull skydiving team when you have zero skydives. Yeah. Perhaps you should research if your state has a DZ, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Which I think almost all of them. Do. I think all but one does, like and I don't. North know. Dakota, maybe? I, yeah, it's somewhere in like the flyover states. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> the flyover states. So you you get to Arizona, you just start cranking. I'm assuming. I I try I try to crank as much as I can. You know, full ramen. You know, top ramen diet yeah. for like that was it. I didn't even question it. You know, I wasn't even <laughs> I didn't even care. Like I was like food. What you know, that wasn't even a thought yeah, like you're I was making economic decisions at that point. happily eating ramen noodle every day yeah like super stoked might switch it up with like you know a bowl of pasta yeah that was like pretty cheap too yeah <laughs> um so yeah i mean just you know every penny every thought you know it's just everything just revolved around skydiving you know if i didn't have enough money to jump that day i, I just watched people land 
Yeah. I just watch people land all day and I'd go and listen to airspeeds debriefs, you know, and what that had to have probably been pretty awesome. And yeah, I'm like, Oh wow, this is how it, uh, you know, a world champion team, skydiving team operates, yeah. you know? And, and they were super cool. They're always like, Oh, Jeff, you know, cause you're like, they'd see me like in the back of the hangar, like, you know, and they're like, Jeff, come over here, just sit yeah. down, like, you know, briefing. Yep. And they were super cool like that. They, they always are. And I've been around them a few times just cause we were at the tunnel so much. They're always cool, but I yeah. always love, they, they are not a laissez-faire team. They are almost militaristic in the way that they approach their training. Yeah. They're they're not joking around. No. No, yeah. it's like um oh god, what was his name? In Rocky. The Rocky Balboa. The other one. Stallone? The Russian. Oh, oh man, if you hadn't asked me, I'd have been able to tell you. Damn it. Well, they train like, you know, yeah. his training program. It's just like Pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah, fully scientific based. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. It's and all, this is still all pre wind tunnel time, right? Yeah, yeah. God, I can't. It's hard. So hard to describe to people the difference that the wind tunnel has made, like and how much it can accelerate your learning curve, and how. Okay, no, jump into the cone of air. Okay, get out. We need to talk about something. Yeah. Jump like that doesn't happen when you're skydiving. Yeah, no. Yeah. The tunnel has definitely changed the sport. It's changed. It's changed the, you know, where the sport is on a you know technical like level of flying. It's also changed the culture, I think, a lot too. Yeah, you for know? better or for worse, would you say? Um, in some ways better, in some ways worse. You know, you know, in some ways, I see I see a lot of the jumpers now. Like when I was learning, you were at the drop zone at 8, 8 a.m. to do ten jumps all day. Yeah. You know? Now, unless you're you know on airspeed or you know a team like that, and you're training for nationals, most most jumpers, you know, are like oh they'll do they'll fly in a tunnel a bit, right, and then they'll show up to the drop zone at like one now and do like three or four jumps in the afternoon and call it quits, you yeah. know? So, you know, it's changed things like maybe the, <clears throat> the drop zone culture. It's taken a, a little bit away from that, but it's also brought back a lot more. Yeah. Would you say flyers are better now because of the tunnel? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's no comparison. I think. Like, what was a world record free fly formation back in those days in Eloy? 40? Oh, I mean, the first Maybe? one was like 20? 20. Yeah, the first one was like a 20 way, I think we did. Yeah. So, what I'm talking way. about is 20 people actually. What are the rules on that? Obviously, the exit not attached except for the base. Base meaning, like, every formation is going to have, what, about four to five people? Yeah. That set, set, uh, they set the foundation for a geometric pattern. And the fall rate, and everybody else has to come in. How long do you fly have to down? You have the you have the jump, you know, whatever. It, it's no, how long really do you have to hold it for though? A, a, a still frame, a one uh, millisecond. Everybody in the formation That's holding it. it. Okay. Yeah, if you get a, a picture of everyone gripped, holding it their grip, it counts. Okay, I it thought there be, might have been like a three second requirement or something. No, no, it's just an one still frame of it. Wow. Okay. Which is kind of like you know when you do a record <clears throat> sometimes, and and you and it's a one second record like that. Yeah. I've been on some where we went back and did it again. Cause we weren't sure if we had it and the judges were looking at it and yeah. we found out we did get it, but then we went and did it again and we held it for like five seconds. And it's better to hit better. the ball a hundred feet over the fence <laughs> yeah. than like hit it, see it hit the top and then bounce straight <laughs> up and you're not sure which <laughs> way it's going to actually come. So 20. Okay. So call it a 20 way. And when, what years were you in Eloy? Uh, so, <clears throat> visited there. We made a trip there in 96 and then I moved back there in 98 and then, and then pretty much called it home base since then. So in about 98, what would you say the 20 way was a big formation? 20 way wasn't even yet happening. And I, what did I, they it was probably like a 12 way at that time? So 12 people, what did they just attempt? What were they going after? 200? Um, what was it? Yeah, it was close to 200. Which to yeah, me, I summer. honestly can't fathom. Last being, summer, you mean in Chicago? That one? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, most yeah. recent yeah. one. It was. I think it was. Yeah. It was definitely obviously triple digits, but I think it was in the twos. Two. Yeah, I think it might have been two hundred four, something they, like that. They didn't. There was no record this year. There wasn't, but even the fact that there that ten x of what was oh yeah yeah possible. I'm just totally. Yeah, the growth oh, I in get the sport. where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I honestly think the tunnel has a lot to do with that, especially that discipline, free flying discipline. Absolutely. Because I watched those videos, it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. The I mean, you've been on some of those records. Yeah. What's that? What's almost that? Almost all like? of them, except yeah. for except for I didn't go last summer. I didn't go to Chicago. I was. What's the biggest formation you've been on? One. What it was like one hundred and sixty four or seventy four. What's that 64? like? A lot of people. A lot of people in this guy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Uh you know, it's just it's just like one hundred and sixty four, two hundred. I mean, at some point, it's like you're not going to notice. The you're not going to notice. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. 
164 to whatever the one that we did before that was like 120 or something. I, I honestly it didn't really notice much of a difference. Is it nuts though to be able to get to your because you I mean you, so you have a specific place you have to be. Yeah, it's not like you just everybody jumps out and they rush and they try to make up a pattern. Like everybody has a designated position, right? Yeah, not only a position where you need to be in the formation, but your your approach to the formation yeah. is pretty specific from and departure a right? certain aircraft and then yes and then the break off departure yeah 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 that's a lot of people under canopy at the same time yeah yeah that and that's that's cool to watch from the ground like sometimes i'm all you know you land and people are like oh my god that was so cool to watch and i'm like damn i wish i was on the ground to watch it instead of being in it because <laughs> everyone's like saying how cool it is from the ground i've never seen it from and ground. you're probably just up there like head on a swivel trying not to kill yourself yeah you're just you really you're just trying to you know fly your hardest and because people are you know it's pulling and pushing and you just need to try to stay in your position and yep. kind of reference, you know, across. reference exactly to, to know what your position is how do they structure those um i'm assuming it's based off of skill so are the more skilled flyers the last ones to come in do they build it from experience level outward or does the experience get uh, or the ability to fly increase as you get outward. Like, what's where do you put the people who have the most skill? Um, you know, you you got to have a little bit of the skill in the middle, and then I mean, it's kind of spread out. It's a little bit. Not that any of them are unskilled, by I, the way. I think closers, closer, closing pods are probably like the more difficult out on the outside. Yeah. Um, well, in one way, because on the end, that's like the end of a whip. You know, so like yep. it moves two inches at the base, but down at the end, it's like 10 feet. Well, you watch in the videos, it looks like a wave the whole yeah. time. You see everything translating through, and obviously it exaggerates as it gets to the tail of that yeah. whip. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, being on that tail, I mean, it's it's moving a lot. Uh, but being on the inside, you need to be a really strong flyer because in the inside, you're that's where you're getting all, you know, people are just trying to knock you down and push <laughs> you over, you know. So you Get out to, of my way. Yeah, you need to be like flying, but like pushing back against it. But really? also like, yeah, I mean – Maybe not pushing back, but pushing, keeping it so you're you're staying, you're trying to keep the formation like looking like that pretty picture it's supposed yeah. to look. Yeah, you're you don't want to it to be there. waffling in and out, right, and breathing and getting closer. And that would be just terrible. Yeah. Have you ever seen like uh, one of those formations where they're getting like over 100 people where somebody it just detonates? Does that ever happen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't really been on. I mean, you have little things, and I I didn't really you know I I know. Things like that have happened on on some of the records I've been on, but never, I was never like around me. Not like the you know. Yeah. It was always like on the other side of the formation, like oh, something exactly where you want it to happen. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> but I, I as never, far away from me as humanly possible. But I still <laughs> captured it on my GoPro. Yeah. That's what I'm shooting for. I need to so then I can post it, but I actually don't want to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so twenty in twenty thousand jumps, do you have like a top three you've ever done? Like, do you, what's if you? Yeah. Yeah, I got what's, a couple. What's the number one for you? Uh, I go back and forth with this one, but, you know, taking mom on a tandem. Yeah. I mean. That's that pretty awesome. sweet. I wish I would have had the chance to do I that. I got my tandem rating to do that. Did you really? That's yeah. awesome. I was like, mom wanted to jump. I'm like, you know what? It'll take me about a week. You know, it's about a week. And some bad weather days. It probably took a few more days because yeah. it got rained out a few days. But it took me yeah. a month because I went through the military tandem course, <laughs> which is a little bit more... <laughs> Robusto. Yeah. <laughs> and we we're also pushing refrigerators out the back of airplanes because that's a good idea. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Let's do that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, taking mom was awesome. What else? Oh, man. Uh, wingsuit flight over New York City. I knew it. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, nice. first off, how restricted is that airspace? It's. Is there any other than I, probably I, D.C. over the White House? I doubt there's I, an area. There's another one I got to do, too. Did you really? Well, not right over the White House, but inside the – there's like a red circle, yep, no-fly zone. Yep. And then there's a red circle within that red circle. Yeah. I got to jump within the red circle within the red it's circle. because you guys are part of the DOD. <laughs> Air that's, Force, that's man. That's what it is. Seventh, it. The uh, seventh. seventh wing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. It's the seventh dimension. <laughs> no Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to get uh, 7711 approved to jump Se into the inner circle. Like, it's not happening. Me and my I can't believe it. Miles was allowed to jump in there, too. I mean, <laughs> well, that, that just <laughs> They proves, let me in him That in just there. proves that they're not doing their research because <laughs> Miles should not have been allowed near the White House. <laughs> Knowing him, he probably would have tried to, like, swoop the roof and kick off an antenna or something. Woo! Yeah, yeah just change the plan yeah. mid-jump. Like, wait, no, I was just yeah. – the White House, let's just go high-five And he'd be, like, trying to high-five yeah. Secret Service as they totally. let the, the dogs loose on him on the grass <laughs> in front. He'd be like, why? What's wrong? <laughs> this is, uh, uh, yeah, man. How did you guys 
how did you guys get that approved? Did you just talk to the right people? I had nothing to do with the approval process of that. The one, the New York jump, I, I was more involved in the DC stuff. I, I got to put that video up too. DC stuff. Awesome. I had nothing to do with that. It was just like, you made a miles above episode out of the New York one, right? Yeah. That okay. was a season one. Right, I don't know it. what episode. I forget. I'll link to it so people can see it. Yeah. It's an easy click. Yeah. That had to have been, cause you guys went over the freedom tower or right next to it, right? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Man. Epic. And on the most beautiful, like, late May. It was, like, May 20th So or great weather. Like perfect. Just perfect. Early morning. I mean, one of the coolest jumps ever. Took, so how hard was it to get permission for that one? Very difficult. Uh, yeah. It took years, years, maybe five or six years to get a jump over the city. I, I proposed other ideas to yeah. the city, to the, you know, the uh, mayor's office, the film department. Everything kind of goes through that for some reason i don't know why but that's how new york works yep um and everything was getting shot down i mean i had permission from building owners landowners like yeah you can base you can jump off of this and land here and new york is like nope yeah i'm like no but like the guy who owns a building <laughs> like you don't understand like, no, how the illegal. city works i'm like well that's what permits are for you're gonna yeah permit me to do that yeah because <laughs> somebody not me most likely red bull will pay you yeah for said permit and they were like nope 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 so then the idea came up like oh how about this we exit over the harbor over the water and we fly our wingsuits up the hudson river and we open our parachutes over the river and then we land on a boat in the river so we're never over the city and they're like oh yeah you guys could yeah that's good <laughs> <laughs> not saying it wasn't cheap yeah or easy. Or easy. I mean, I definitely know it wasn't you. And I don't want to, like, blurt out how much it costs. It just don't. I don't want to put yeah. Red Bull on the spot on that one. But yeah. it was. That was Money well spent, I would say. Was, yes. Thank you, Red Bull. So my amazing. dream jump is take my American flag suit, which is based off of a high-res picture of the shoulder patch that I wore for 10 years, top of the Freedom Tower, and let me send that on a base jump and land at the 9-11 Memorial. Like, Building top or or spire top? Spire top. Yeah. Send it. I think I can yeah. get the suit moving before I hit. Oh, that. easy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, not easy, but you could. I get yeah, it done. I mean, I'll do a little bit of training just to make sure. <laughs> but uh, and then fly bomb out and just come back around and fly as far as I can, open up and land in between the two uh, memorial pools. That's that like sense. dream jump. And there's pretty much no chance that'll ever happen. Yeah, I don't think like that. less than zero, which is an impossible number, which is why I think that's the number. Because yeah. they're never going to let me do that. Base jumping in New York City will never happen. They're just. Has it always just, been like that? Always. Base jump. It's always been. No. Actually, there was a dude back in the, back in the day. There's this dude. There's Thor. always a dude. Yeah. If you Google this, Thor, Norwegian base jumper, New York City. This dude back in like the late 80s or 90s. I don't know. Um, Might have been late 80s. Yep. He shows up to New York and he just he's just jumping off of everything. They don't know what to do with him back then. They're interviewing him yeah. in landing air and like in the street when he lands. They're like, oh my God, what are you? And he had like two hundred base jumps and he was like the most, you know and he just best p- base jump in the world he just at the pillaged time. New York. He just came, he jumped off of everything. He jumped off all the iconic buildings. Yeah. And uh, no one, you know, they were like, huh? Well, it's, there's no law. Like, we can't really arrest you. They didn't know what to do with him. Yeah. They just came, jumped everything, and left. So it wasn't always like that, but well, I don't think Jeb helped very much. <laughs> yes, actually, I'll say it. You don't have to. No, actually, you're <laughs> right. Jeb did not. Help. His Speaking of Jeb Corliss, <laughs> for those of you listening, he <laughs> let's just say he was involved in some high-profile activities that really slammed, I think, the legalities of New York down. Yeah. Oh, it's all over the newspaper. Yeah. I mean, he tried. It's on a cover of the Post. He tried to get the Empire (laughs) State Building, right? Made it over. He went, check this out. He makes a base rig. So in all parachute systems, there's going to be some metal, whether it's in the leg straps or if it's a skydiving rig, you're going to have actually a bunch of metal. But for a base rig, you're still going to have, you know, some people still use the metal links because they don't want to move forward into technology and use slinks. Um, But so he made a totally fabric base rig. So no metal. Got a fat suit. <laughs> I love that part. Put put. That's I think awesome. he was wearing the base rig under the fat suit, right? I, I don't know how it was all set up, but yeah. I, j- I knew there was a fat suit. So he yeah. got into a fat suit because he is a known base jumper, and I think he's pillaged some stuff in New York previously. But I doubt a security guard is going to like have his picture there referencing it. This is him. Yeah. <laughs> so he got a fat suit. He disguised himself, made it in, went into the bathroom at the top on the observation deck. When, so I've been up there. 
and it's smaller than most people think, right? Because you see stuff on TV like, oh, it's huge. It's not huge. Goes into the bathroom, gets ready to go, goes outside, climbs over the fence, and an undercover cop, not an, an off-duty cop, grabs him. Through the fence. Through the fence held on. and held on to him. And I think he cuffed him to the fence. He did. They eventually cuffed him to the fence. And Jeb's just like, ah, being Jeb, a psychopath. And that all can't of the be ba- comfortable, though. I no. mean, that's like almost well, more think that dangerous. I was not letting him just jump at that point, but they don't know that. They don't. I was going to say he probably he might have. The guy might have thought he was trying to commit suicide. Yeah. He, who knows if the cop was aware enough to realize he had a magic backpack? And on. You know what? The cops in New York they deal with that a lot. I talked to some of my oh, cop really? buddies, and I'm like, you know, we we're talking about base jump, and they're like, man, you know how many, you know, calls we get a d- every day, and there's not that many. Like yearly, there's only like ten. Suicides by uh, yeah, yeah, something about ten successful suicide jump jumps yeah. a year. That's actually a lot. But there's like dozens and dozens of, of threats and calls and they just deal with it on a on a regular basis. That's gotta be tough. And they and you know, one of my buddies I, I did uh I climbed up the Brooklyn Bridge one time with some of the some of the NYPD guys and we're on the top and he was telling me a story. He's like, Oh, this one time I had to you know, it was up here. I'm like, Oh like up here and he was like, Yeah, talk this guy into not jumping. He was like on the lead edge of this at the top of the bridge, I was like, Man. not the not the where the cars go, but no, like you're the talking top, about, the yeah. tippy tippy top, the suspension, yeah. the port. suspension, yeah. yeah, nuts. So, so yeah, like, so Jeb doesn't get to jump. <laughs> he doesn't get to somehow jump. they got him back over that fence. Yeah, which they would have had they to uncut through the fence. I don't know how they did it, but so call they, him up right now. Uh, I don't want to talk to Jeb. <laughs> I, but, actually, Jeb doesn't know who I am, so it's perfect. Um, <laughs> you can call and talk to him about it later. It's uh, so he didn't jump, and then that was like you said, front page of the post. And I think that's about the time where New York was like, we've had enough of this crap. Because isn't it a felony there now? Yeah, yeah. And here, too. So, yeah, we're sitting in Las Vegas because, well, people used to do the same thing here. I have so many stories of people trying to jump the stratosphere. Well, the font blue. Stratosphere, yeah. The font blue is right around here somewhere. Mountain blue. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which I knocked a couple over there. Yeah, allegedly. It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, Hypothetical situations. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, I mean, so that's how cities get around it. They're like, oh, you want to play that game? We'll put a capital F on your record and change your life. Yeah. So... For jumping with a parachute, which is, like, pretty harsh. Yeah. All right, so you have your mom's jump the over New York. What stands out after that? Um, oh, these are these are just videos I'm going to put. You don't get to cheat. This is the stuff you already said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and New York, mom, and, wow. I mean, there's oh, – what did I think? I had one on the top of my head, like, right on the tip of my tongue earlier. And well, I, you were there with Luke, right? Oh yeah, that was that was that was something else too, right there. I'm, I'm gonna That's, imagine that was that jump was more about him, but you're sitting there in the plane. So Luke Akins is the guy who partnered up with Stride Gum and jumped out of an airplane without a parachute and landed in the net. Yeah. But you guys, so what was the role you guys were serving? Were you like safety? Yeah, kind of. I think just moral support. To be That's honest. about all I you could offer. I think I, when we <laughs> talked about it with Luke, I mean, Luke was like, man. Yeah. You know, I really want to have, like, I'm going to bring you and Andy and John, you know, yeah. like he had mentioned, he's like, I need some of my bros there. Yeah. You know, and he, he was working with, you know, all sorts of like nutritionists and trainer, you know, he was like really prep ramping up for this stunt. How much time so, between c- concept to execution over a year? Yeah. I want to say it was like two years. I, I was with him when he got like the first phone call. We were driving to the drop zone and he got a phone call from someone. I was like, oh, we had this idea to jump out out of a plane without a parachute and like, you know, land somehow without using a parachute. Yeah. Uh, would you be into it? And at, at first he was like, no. And then, and then he just kept thinking about it and thinking about like, huh, how could you do yeah, this? Yeah. It starts your mind down a path of figuring out what is yeah. impossible and what is not. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, there was a bunch of ideas on the drawing board. Yeah. Different designs, ramps, <laughs> giant mega ramps that he like, yeah. Fly over to it. Oh, <laughs> there's like, that freaking bell. Yeah. You hear that? It's, it's dude, we're in Italy here. It's the Vene- <laughs> yeah, we're the, the Venetian. The canal is below us. Oh, man. So, yeah, a lot of different ideas. I thought it would have been funny or it would be cool to get a hold of those uh, ideas right now to see all the different iterations until they landed on the net. Yeah, I mean, I think the ideas weren't that, like, drastically different. You yeah. know, it was like ramp, net, but some of the specifics of, like, how the net would work. And, yeah. You know, and then, and then it, it – in the end, it was actually like I think a much simpler solution. Yeah, you know, like even Luke's one of the ideas was you know piss like 
uh, kind of like a piston kind of yeah. compression. A way to bleed off the energy because you have so much coming yeah. into the net. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just ballast. It was just weight. It was just some weights. <sighs> I saw that video. People are yeah. like, would you do that? I'm like, of course I would do that. It sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I also realized like once you, people don't realize how much control you have over your body. And if you could line it up and you actually get out at the right spot, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and you can get out the wrong spot on some of the training jumps. One of the ones I did with Luke in Washington. Yeah, how did you guys lead up to it? Explain how the we'll so, get to the jump itself, but what led up to it? Um, well, well, I'll tell you one thing. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where like where to start with that. Really, um, there was like there's definitely a couple of components that are pretty cool about the whole. Well, the net one component the the how the ideas of like a a, a guide yeah you know, how am system. i gonna how am i gonna guide myself into this net you know from like 20 to that 21,000 feet you know like yep. there was i you know heads up display like <laughs> vr you know um <laughs> which would have caused nothing but problems yeah like uh you know maybe um some kind of you know drone type thing that you're just that's flying and you're just flying near that or something yeah and then it, it was really simple the solution was really it was just lights lights on the ground pointed straight up and depending on what side of the light you're on you know you would yep. either see a red light or a white light so, so and i was i knew so that's knew what they're like in or out so it's a pilot solution because was, he, yeah, he's, he's also a pilot it's the same indicators that you get when you're on glide path it's white yeah. or it could be two whites and two reds and yeah. if it starts three reds and a white i think you're low three whites and uh one red and you're high and you and you just basically can visually guide it. I yeah. knew that's the solution he was going to go with before I had heard about it because of his background flying. So he didn't he, he didn't really even know like how to set them up, but he had that light idea. And then we kind of like went out and yeah. moved around in the field. But well, basically then you just go, made it like then a you go cube. find engineers that can figure that <laughs> stuff out. Yeah, you have yeah. the idea. Find the smart people. Can you please do this? But he did. He did have a lot of a lot of help with that with the net. He yeah. had some some big stunt guys from hollywood that rig up like huge probably big jumps yeah they they do all sorts of like crazy cable work and stuff in hollywood yeah. world so he had a he had a good team he had a good team I mean, you can't do that by yourself that's just way too big of a project yeah <laughs> and then did he just start practicing just lining up the lights Was that's that it the majority low, of low the poles you know he, yeah he, just low pole you know over the over the lights yeah how many and practice jumps do you think you did he almost a hundred uh, in the, with the light system. Yeah, you know, it was close. I forget the exact number, but in my head, it's like a hundred jumps. Let's just say. Yeah. And uh, he 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 nailed out a hundred out of a hundred. He he like would have been in the net. Yeah. A hundred times you, in a row. Do you remember the dimensions of the net? Hundred. It was a hundred by a hundred, so 100 square. Yeah. And he was getting out of what twenty two for the Tw twenty one twenty one. Why so high? Just because. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I mean. Let's just let's just take Send it, up it there. Yeah. Let's just like let's make it really <laughs> dramatic. We need oxygen now, you know. Yeah. We can have hypoxia that could Yeah, <laughs> of course. It already <laughs> seems to be relatively dangerous. How can we ramp this up? Just, yeah, let's just, just dump the car more. in fifth gear and, and see what happens. But you know, it's really interesting. One of the training jumps we did in Washington, we exited like I don't know, half a mile, maybe even more, a mile away and like tracked over just to, to see net. if you could do it. Oh yeah, it was e it was easy. Yeah. But that part was easy. But be, staying over those lights was not easy. I never managed to pull with all the lights being white when I tried really? practicing over the lights. Yeah. It was it was very deceiving of like what is straight down when you're in free fall. Yeah. Um, my perception, I was always, I thought I was like, I'm straight over it. And I was always, it was always out in front of me. Interesting. And when I was, when I was actually really straight above it, I felt like I was out past it looking down backwards a little bit but i was huh. uh, that was when you were actually right over it and then and then guess what then you got like this thing called wind <laughs> you can't see it like yeah. and you know yeah it's windy and free fall but like the regular yeah, you're not wind seeing the lateral it, drift lateral yeah. it's pushing you left and right and like you know that part not easy yeah. not easy at all it was like it's a different game you don't ever play this game in skydiving yeah. Twenty thousand skydives you never do this yeah. you never just try to like free fall over target yeah wingsuiting your proxy flying you're going near things there's yep. things you're aiming for but that's it you're looking at angles and this is different it's like 
Yeah, I've never tried to look down and hold. Yeah, especially the wingsuit stuff. You're looking so far ahead because life is ripping by your face so fast. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, you, know, you got to stay at least three seconds ahead, which is hundreds of yards at that point, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, you guys go to the. Uh, how was it on the actual execution day? It was a little stressful. There was some drama uh, behind the scenes with um, with the basically the organization. You know, the the TV. Oh, really? And SAG. Uh, yeah, they kind of... What was their issue? Uh, they wanted him to wear a parachute as a backup. Which would break his back what on the net. Break his back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they should try that once and see how... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at literally, at what well, point, he, he at what point are you going to see, like, I'm not going to make it at, like, 600 feet, and you're going to try to... Yeah. Like, you're better off just continually, like continue to attempt to make attempt the net to make the net yeah because you're still going to hit at a high rate of speed from 600 trying anything yeah so because he had it waived right like you I mean you're not so technically it's not a skydive really if you don't wear a parachute. intend to use a parachute it's just considered a high fall so all the rules of skydiving no way so yeah that was the big loophole of like because ever because luke's part of the board too the united states parachute yeah. association and everyone's like how are you gonna pull this one off and he's like well it's not a skydive <laughs> and USPA wanted nothing really to do with it. They're like, yeah, no, that's not a skydive. Wow. I mean, that's some creative wordsmithing. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. I mean, exiting. A p- All right, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. Yet. <laughs> All right. I'm that's, good on them. Hey. Because that's, sometimes that's what you have to do to do the stuff that that's you want to do. That's, well, lawyers are good sometimes. Yeah. I when can't believe this. When they figure out things like this that you, know, you want to do in your yeah. favor, then. And it works out in your and favor. It works out. Yeah. 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 Was he pretty chill on the aircraft flight up? Yeah, he was he was quiet, you know. He was pretty quiet. I think it was just like there we he's go in his head, man. You know, <laughs> I mean that's that's a big thing, right? Uh, we all were quiet, you know. It was kind of just sitting there. We were all on oxygen too, yeah. so we couldn't really talk. Um, but you know, we all kind of just gave Luke his space, sat, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think you know we just did normal high fives yep. before we jumped. Did he spot it? Yeah, I would imagine yeah. so. <laughs> With. You know, we got a green light, too. I don't know. Yeah. We probably got a green light, too. Sometimes but. you can trust your buddies to spot, but if you're the guy going with no rig, I might take a peek. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because maybe that'd be a great time to fool your buddy. Like, ah, just kidding. We're three miles <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hope you can make it. Hope you can track fa- far and fast. That had to have been a pretty crazy visual, though, for you free-falling with him. Cause, and I'll post the video to that, too, so people can look at it. You guys are all free-falling with him, and then you got to deploy your parachute. Yeah. And your yeah. homies just still lead safe and it down to the ground that's is it and it was three of us that had to pull our parachutes so we opened them yep uh kind of like a little cascade like one person pulled and yep. i pulled and um i think john pulled the low he was like the guy who pulled at two or three thousand feet and then i was at like three or four and andy was at like five or something yep but when i pulled my eyes never left luke you know and i actually opened i had i had, I had some line twists and I was just like dealing with it, you know, but not looking at it, you know, just like kicking out and like my eyes are just locked on. And about the time Luke hit the net, I flew, I was like, I was about, you know, three or 4,000 feet straight over the top of the net. Like I could see all white lights. Nice. And I could see Luke going and I was like, oh, he's got it. <laughs> he's got it. You know, I was like, uh, yes. that had been such a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Were they, was that live? So by the time I landed, it was like, so they were done celebrating. The champagne is gone. Everyone went home. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not that far, but yeah. Uh, Were they doing that live? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, that was live. No five second delay? Well. Because that. It was live on East Coast time. And then it was one hour delayed to, you know, down the chain. Because I'm just saying, if it had gone bad, that'd be a bad live show. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was like a minute or two minute delay. Okay. I was going to say, I bet you they had a mechanism in there somewhere to maybe not broadcast like that. <laughs> Stop. And yeah, we're done. Oh, that would have been, that would have been so bad. It would have been bad. Oh, my God. Do yeah. you still, uh, you still base jump? You know what? Because I, I wanted out. to talk to you about this yeah. one because my, I, I struggle I'm with torn, this. man. I am torn too because torn. of my buddy Alex. It's, uh, and, the impact that that had great family friend. My wife for the first time was like, Hey, I need you to, I want you to stop. But if you want to keep going, like, you know, also I'll support you. So I've put more time and thought and effort into it. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to continue, but it's going to be way different in the respects that it was before. Like I think Switzerland and using trees for tree gates is probably over. 
but maybe head to Notch Peak occasionally and send it off of a cliff that's got nothing but free space in front of you and be conservative. I don't know. I've, I've been sp- spending a lot of time with the, like the risk versus reward conversation in my own head. Yeah. No, it's a good one. I mean, I've struggled with it. Uh, so I had a, I injured myself. <laughs> Not do tell <laughs> <laughs> from base jumping. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ended up in the hospital surgery, you know, just shattered my wrist. It wasn't, in Arizona, right? In Arizona, yeah. Tell, you got to tell the tale. It's a saguaro. Yep. Which was an awesome jump. It's over this river. And you can't jump it every year because there's, like, some birds that come. and if Protected the birds, species. Yeah, it's like uh, you, can't even hi- you can't even hike. Oh, they shut the it all the way down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're not allowed to be on the other side, the cliff side of the river. So, you know, once every, like, four or five years – Birds don't come, and it's it stays open, so you can go there. And, and they don't care, right? It's yeah, yeah, based on to- yep. totally legal. You can which jump, is land, high-five a park ranger in the ground. Which is pretty rare for people listening to this, other than basically Twin Falls and Moab, some of the areas in Moab. Yeah, it's, you, BLM land yeah, stuff. You're yeah. not going to find a lot of areas where you, it, you're not covertly participating in your activity. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, yeah, so a really awesome, awesome location to jump. I loved it so much that 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 was such a good spot. Uh, just really, it was the picture. It was the postcard, um, for sure. But 180 cliff strike, and so that means you jumped. I jumped. The direction you're heading is the direction you want the canopy to open. 180 meaning that the fabric was facing the opposite direction. So now you're flying back towards the rocks. Yeah. And yeah. this was, I'm assuming, not this is not a wingsuit jump, right? No, it's a it's a lower. Cl- I forget the exact height of it, but it's, you know around the 300 footer range. And the reason I bring that up for people listening, wingsuit you can get way way far away. You couldn't jump that in a wingsuit because it's too low. So if you jump a cliff without a wingsuit, you are very close to it when your parachute opens. Yeah. Which is why a 180 is no bueno, and you have to be Johnny on the spot to get out of that. Man, I remember I was I was tired that day too. I was really tired, and I was actually I was headed here. I was coming to Vegas the next day, and I just I said, oh let me just do one more jump before I go to Vegas. On the way to the airport, I was coming here. I was going to jump the Eiffel Tower here in Vegas, Paris. Oh, who and Miles did that? Yeah, of course did like, a gainer. It's not a big deal. Yeah, so yeah, it was me and Miles <laughs> were supposed to do that the next day. Oh wow! And like I called him from the hospital. I was like, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Maybe some ground crew action, but you certainly not. I doing couldn't the even do that. Oh yeah. wow! I was like. So you 180 cliff strike. 180 cliff strike, um, and it's a gnarly cliff to have a cliff strike. It ain't a smooth. Is it jagged? It's it's jagged. Yeah. It's okay. Jagged. So probably the are the birds and up in like the little oh, like yeah the they little got pockets? little oh yeah. no it's not like a smooth like you know Moab wall or did you reach out? Is that what got your wrist? I, you know, I like I don't remember reaching out to be honest. I the only part I remember. All of a sudden, I'm looking at a wall, and on the video, it's like l- less than two seconds from opening to impact. Okay. It was like, it happened so quick, and all I remember was putting my legs out, like trying to absorb the shot, like putting my feet out, like I was going to jump off, you know, press my feet yep. into it. Somehow, I shattered my wrist, you know, and I thought I shattered both of them, because when I landed, I just, I couldn't move anything. Oh, wow. And I tore the canopy. I broke a couple lines, a, an, a, an A line. Which center, is the center. front of your canopy. Of canopy. It's an a, a lines are not ones you want to break. Not one you want to break. Bunch of uh, t- good tears in the canopy. I had some good tears in it too, but the parachute flew great. Like I, I still had a great flare. Uh, and when even with your wrists the way they were, you well, still when yeah, even with the wrists. And and once I got away from the wall and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna live. I'm gonna survive this one. I was like, let me just do a quick practice flare, if, you know, because I was I was like, the first thing I checked was my legs actually under can. I was like looking for a bone sticking out and then i grabbed my head to see how my head was because i smashed my head too into the wall afterwards you know just like blah, 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 blah. just so like you, everything just <laughs> and you have this on video i'm assuming i have it on video right. i haven't posted this one yet perhaps it's time i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah maybe sliding down the wall oh it's I, a great shot of the canopy just like getting you can see like where it tears oh on, boy. on jagged parts like i'm like ah. And I stall it backwards. Yep. Get it flipped around. Um, and yeah, I do a. I check. I remember checking my head, looking down at my legs. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. My wrists really hurt. Am I gonna be able to flare? And I pull down a little. I'm like, all right, I got one flare in me. Like I got enough adrenaline pumping in yep. me right now. Like shattered wrists, no problem. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Came in tiptoe landing. Yep. Just dropped my stuff and must have said, I was like, I think I broke my wrist. I think I said that. 20 times in the video i think i broke my wrist 
I think about Brooklyn. I was like freaking out, you yeah. know. Well, you probably peaked out of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just dropped my gear there, and then, and then figured out like, well, we got it. We got to get out of here. And so I just walked. My friends carried my gear for me, and I just hiked out, hiked back out, and straight to the hospital. St- yeah, st- st- drove straight to the hospital. How bad was it? Uh, I got like, I mean, it's com- it. The doctor was like, "You're you're going to be a straight wrist." fused you know fused wrist you're never going to be able to bend your wrist again you're doing no, no. push-ups like this for the rest of your life and i mean i could do handstands like i get nice. I, got, I got like full range on it now is there metal in there or are they just, yeah okay. yeah and there's like a, a Iron plate, Man. plate and a bunch of screws 10 or 12 screws 12 i think screws well wow. it just looks like this crazy thing because <laughs> it's all in the head it's just the joint it's all in my joint so it's like it was like was it compound or was all still like did you get the classic halo swelling around it or just pain? Oh, man, I was swollen for like a year. Really? Like even after physical, I was like, you know, done with physical therapy. Like, all right, you know, just keep doing this. I wasn't going to the, like the, the doctor's office anymore to do physical therapy. I was, it was still swollen. It, it took like a year for the swelling to go down. It's odd. But most of the time I've seen a lot of people break their wrists and they'll get um, at the point of break. There's just a halo of swelling. And like when that shows up, like, dude, you got to go to the hospital. Like your wrist is broken. People are like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, I do. <laughs> your wrist is broken. You need to go to the hospital. It's funny how it just like halos up right there at that point of the break. I don't remember that or I didn't notice that. I Have you base jumped that. since that day? Yeah, yeah. I've done, you know, but so that was almost, that was like five years ago. This, this, uh, spring, this, this spring, it'll be five years ago was that, that accident. And I've, I've done about maybe, you know, I, I'd be exaggerating if I said a hundred jumps, but let's just say a hundred. Yeah. Hundred jumps I've done since then. Uh, Fifty of them were all in off the off the uh, the zip line over in Dubai with the zip. The oh, zip that's line right. Yeah. That we did. So I did. I banged out a bunch there. Then last summer, no, two summer was it last summer? Uh, when we were all in Idaho for the miles above. Yep. Filming and you know I'm like all right, it's a bridge. It's we got the truck to jump off of. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, you, know? you guys were jumping off the top of an RV or whatever that yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was – I've always wanted to do one of those. I'm like, you know, so so it's just different, you know, being at the bridge. Yeah. That's good. So well, and It's that, a controlled that's environment. I yeah. Mean, I feel comfortable at the bridge too because you can go there. And if you want to do crazy stuff, go ahead. Don't Please don't do it around me because I'm like, let's just get on the railing and jump off and survive. It's extreme enough for me. Yeah. But, I mean – yeah, I've put a lot of thought into it. I just, I don't know if I'm necessarily totally ready to give it up, but I'm definitely going to change the planning process associated with it. Like the desire to go and deep back country, like high young Frau and lot of and all that stuff. Like those are my favorite jumps, but at the same time, because of the people that I'm there with and like one of the main, one of my main bros that I was always there with is no longer because of that. It just, it, it didn't taint but it uh, tempered the way that I think about it for sure. Takes the fun away from it. Dude, it yeah. sucks. That call, well, actually it wasn't a call. I was, I was in the backcountry uh, camping with my family. No cell service. And so you can imagine what happens when you drive back into cell service. Ding, 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 ding. And I was just, I was like, this is weird. I, I mean, like, you know, the normal volume of text you're going to get in a day and just blew up. And before opening any of them, I was looking at him like, there's only one person we know in common. And I knew where he was. I'm wow. Like, God damn it. And then, you know, the text message, hey, give me a call. The class, you don't want to tell anybody over text. It's like, hey, uh, did you hear? Can you give me a call? It's like, I'm just like through my phone. I'm like, God damn it. You knew right away. Yeah, that's a rough one, man. It's, uh, I don't think we'll ever stop skydiving just because it's way too much fun. We were due <laughs> to get back in our suits and rip around a little bit. It's been like two years yeah. since we were in skydive San Diego ripping around. Yeah. Montana, Montana is not the jam for drop zones. No. Like the Lost Prairie Boogie is up there, but I've never been to the DZ. I don't know how big it is, so just we, we got to do a trip back to SD. Yeah, or come back to Arizona. Oh, that's true. I could come back to Arizona. I mean, not in San the Diego. Summer. Not in the summer, though. No, 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 no. Because you'll die. Yeah, it's it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. You think you're still getting better? Twenty five years yes. into it. Yes, I, I've I've coaches. What, coach what aspects? I mean, free flying, free flying. Like what aspect of free flying are you getting better at? Because you're dynamic d- stuff. You know, just the tunnel flying. It's unbelievable that 20,000 jumps into it. Do you see an end to your no, improvement? No, no, because these kids are, like, doing, you know, it's just, it's evolu- it's just it keeps going. It keeps going. And I, I think, you know, 
there's just so much more like like there's a bunch of stuff I still like I want to be able to do I just you know there's so many challenges I have haven't quite yeah conquered yet how old are you now 42 how long do you think you'll jump for uh, probably for the rest of my life I don't know if I'll jump at this L- at this pace. level yeah at this level you know but I, I think I'll always be a scout you know always do a, a jump here and there yeah when I'm older yeah. I think I will too what uh what do you think you'd want to do when it comes to a level though between it's your professional occupation like is obviously can you jump when you're 70 i'm not going to say that you're not going to be on the red bull air force when you're 70 <laughs> i'm probably not going to but be. i'm going to say you might not be <laughs> right i don't yeah it's pretty unless safe unless you're like on the rocket um wheelchair team and you're like you know you and miles are racing wheelchairs with rockets on the back maybe then you'll be on the red bull air force team but what do you i mean what do you think you'll do next do you spend any time thinking about that stuff? yeah all the time i think i've been thinking about that for the last 20 you know i was 10 15 years ago, I, you know, I was like, oh man, five years, what am I going to do? You know, I was always been thinking that like, this is going to end or, you know, you can't do this forever. And, but yeah, at some point it, it will, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll catch up. You know, you won't be able to, you know, there'll be a younger, better kid. That's to take likely the, what's going to, I would <laughs> take suspect, the job, right? If I was a betting man, I would say it'll be some young punk. Yeah. But I think I'm, who I think started I'm, in the tunnel when he was four. Yeah, because exactly. his dad owned the tunnel, and it's like, <laughs> it's just a ripper. Just shreds. <laughs> yeah. Man. What do you, What do you think you would do? I I think I'll still be like tied into the sport, you know, um, and you know, consulting or you know, uh, continue to do some like training stuff, contracting or something. Uh, and then I have a few ideas. I, I don't really know if I want to like. Well, then don't. Yeah. Because yeah, there, there are things I'm working on. I don't want to spoil anything. But there's keep a, those to yourself. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I don't want you yeah. to spoil anything. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah. I ask only because I'm. I honestly still try to figure out what I'm doing with my life. I have no idea what I do for a living. <laughs> I know the things that I do, but my least favorite question is like, "Oh, hey, Andy, nice to meet you. What do you do for a living?" And I go, "I don't know." That's usually <laughs> what I say. That's legitimately usually what I say because there's so many different aspects and I will wake up with a panic attack sometime. Like what am I going to do in five years? Yeah. What if what I'm doing now I can't do? And I slowly am coming to the peace with, I don't think I'll ever retire because I don't think I would enjoy retirement. I enjoy doing something. Uh, what does that mean? Like retire, you just stop doing like living. I think it like, means like, you're like tired again. Re retirement. Like, I don't tired know. again. Yeah. Like you're retired. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, my mom, my mom's like seventy eight. She's not retired. She's probably never going to retire. Like she paints. Like she loves yeah. painting. She's never going to stop painting. I don't think I'll ever stop doing. Like, I mean, I love doing the podcast stuff, sitting down and exploring what people are into. Like, I could do that forever. I don't know if I will do it forever, but I just have come to the realization that I'll I'll figure it out when the time comes. I'll take opportunities when they show up, and I'll figure it out when the time comes. Because that's the only way I can go back to sleep when I have a panic attack. Like <laughs> <laughs> five years from now, what am I gonna? <sighs> okay, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah it's interesting when you start i never thought about i didn't think about it much like i wish i had gone back or if i could go back on the military side i would have given more forethought into the after because i was so this is what i want to do and then i was doing it i'm like this is the best ever and then it ends and you go oh sh- shit what yeah. do i do now yeah which yeah. is why i do so many different things because i don't know what i want to do i know what i don't want to do nine to five cubicle suit and tie Definitely, like, just shoot me in the head. I'll do it for myself. Nobody would have to shoot me. <laughs> I, would, I would handle that particular operation on my own because it would not be. An, I would just. I would suck at it. I would be a bad employee in an office. You would not it's like. In fact, we can't have to fire. I him. would never be in my cubicle. They'd be like, "Where's Jeff?" Uh, yeah, you would probably around. be finger painting on the windows or something. Oh, absolutely, probably spray painting. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> what do you got after uh, after Vegas? And we're at the shot show for probably should. I don't know. Yeah, should have mentioned that, which is a tactical convention. I actually don't know what shot stands for. Yeah, what? I mean, I'll look it up. I don't know. I should know. It. I've been here, and you know, I've been here so many times. The fact we don't know it, I think, because at the end of the week, you're shot. Yeah, and you got to go, and you can easily switch the O with an I, and it's yeah, still it's accurate. The shit show. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like the shit show. Yeah, for years. Yeah. What do you got going on in your schedule after this? You know, um, I'm headed to L.A. It's not really a jumping thing, but just just going up back down to Red Bull headquarters to go do some training with the high performance. I see you team posting there. stuff yeah. from there. Tell me about that because oh, it seems awesome. like they have you doing some interesting stuff. Dude, it's awesome. It's like it's like Exo, e- Exos, 
Is that – have you been the, the – I've gym? never been, no. Yeah, so I've heard about it, you know, and it's just like, you know, gym, like health, weight uh, – health and, and fitness, like college, you know, that's all you do every day. Like you wake up, you, you do warm up, you, you do a little exercise, you get some massage work done, you eat like awesome food, you learn about nutrition and then you go float in a float tank and get some cryo done and float tanks and, are money, you know, all that stuff. It's like they're treating you like an NFL player, yep. you know, like, which, <laughs> well, the fact that Rebel Skyhivers. will do that <laughs> for you, that treatment. the fact that they have that facility, yeah. I mean, I've tried a th probably a third of the things you're talking about. I've always wanted to try cryo. I haven't had a chance to do that. The float tank, I tried that. I like it. I, w I, I need to like literally just write down on my schedule a day to go do it because there's actually a place. Amazing. It took me a bit. It took me a bit to, to relax into it. And, of course, I'm an idiot, so the first one I ever booked was 90 minutes. And... Uh, just zipped in there and probably five minutes in there started losing my mind because I couldn't, I couldn't unwind and relax. I just yeah. didn't know. It was a realization for me. I didn't, I wasn't good at unwinding. Do you meditate? Uh, I generally don't think about much during the day. So I would say, yes, I spend most okay. of my day meditating. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot going on between the ears. So I, I think it's a form of meditation. It is. Yeah. I don't <laughs> really. I daydream a lot and I talk to myself a lot, which my wife, Jamie, says is weird sometimes, but it's like, hey, I'm having an awesome conversation. Get out of it. It's with myself. But the, So the float tank, I got in there. And but in sky, I feel like even in, you know, the sport skydiving, like visualization is kind of like a little bit like a form of meditation. I've always been into visualization. And, I, I, you know, I guess when I do jump mm -hmm. or especially like the base jumping, like I told, I spend a ton of time visualizing. So maybe I meditate more than I think. I just I don't think of it in the same terms. Mm -hmm. But uh, that tank, man. It took me two or three times going, I think, to really get the benefit and to be t oh, totally able to unwind. I was amazed at the the static in my head. All these... Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it finally, like the third time I went, I got to a spot. I think I was nodding out a little bit. So I was in that space of like pseudo consciousness. Sure. And then got out of that one. I was like, whoa, that was a killer reset. And then I forgot to go back. Yeah. And that, that's the best actually. Like, you know beyond like just like laying in there and like having to like meditate in there like yeah. when you're tired and you just go in there and you knock out and you're just yeah not out <laughs> floating in water that's it's the a best trip. feeling i can crack my neck it's the only place i've ever been where i can kind of like i can you can get a few stretch hours. my spine yeah and crack it without totally. a pressured adjustment yeah it's like it's like a inversion table but you're just laying in water yeah and i last time i was in there usually it's a mental thing for me most of the time i'm in there it's, it's all mental I relax my, my, my brain more, I feel like. Yep. It's just more relaxing that way. The last week when I was at Red Bull and I was doing I was in the float tank, I had the first like physical feeling like that. Like yeah. I felt like my spine I, I grew an inch and I can feel it. Like as I was laying there, I'm like You can kinda of manipulate your muscles I'm and like, adjust your I'm own like, back. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting taller. It felt so good. Yeah, there's And I think it was just maybe what my what I really needed. You know, it goes to what you really need. Like before, maybe my I needed rest, and my brain just was like zapped, you know, and zonked. But this time, it was my my body. You well, know? I think you need a few reps, just like learning anything new. I think there's you gotta you gotta figure out your way inside of that tank. But I I just I need to. I've actually made notes in the past. Like I need to. There's a place like two miles from my house. Like at the end of the day, which I don't. I tried it one time in the morning harder for me to relax in the morning end of the day i can unwind more because then after that it's just like best night of sleep in my entire life don't go at like eight in the morning thinking about all the things you gotta <laughs> do like yeah the brain will I gotta not, get out here the brain, the yeah the brain will not shut down because you're yeah. just rolodexing your calendar yeah go but do yeah. like a really really intense workout and just like burn yeah. yourself out and go eat a big meal and then no. just go bah or if you're thing joe you're rogan style yeah. go crush an edible and then get in there that's his <laughs> recommendation not mine <laughs> He's more of a spiritual, not a spiritual, a psychedelic adventurer. So, <laughs> but I mean, he's got one at his podcast studio. It he's doesn't suck. Really? Yeah, he's got the full. He's got a sauna. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, what? Oh, he's he got a sauna. Oh man, his facility's phenomenal. He's oh, got a full awesome. gym, kitchen, sauna, flow tank, indoor bow range, car parking, and podcast studio. Dude, he's awesome. I love, I love that guy. He he is cracks me up. He's so fun his new stand-up comedy that's on netflix so i have a 15 year old son laughing. and a 13 year old son we just got back from sonora mexico we were hunting coos deer which is like a very very tiny uh white tail member of the white tail family no idea how closely they tie into hard to see 
uh, they call them the gray ghost because they're just they're impossible to see, except huh. for except for when you see them. So they're not impossible to see. They're tough. So you can bring. Wait. So you go hunting in Mexico. Yes. And then you could bring back the meat. I home? did not bring back the meat because that becomes an issue. So okay. what we did is donated. I donated. Uh, but both of my sons got a buck. I donated the meat to the rancher that was hosting oh, us, nice. and they were like. They awesome. loved it. They were That's stoked. Amazing. And then uh, Riley and Tyler, they'll get. They're going to get like a shoulder mount because it. Apparently, it's a very rare and difficult deer. I know about the difficulty part. I didn't realize about how rare it is to actually be able to go and be successful. And we only had three days hunting and a day of travel on each side, and they knocked it out of the park. They slammed it. That's so awesome. So we go back to Phoenix, though, as this ties into his stand-up specials. Um, Joe uses adult language on his podcast and he talks about some interesting adult topics on his stand-ups and for whatever reason we go there and they have Netflix at the Marriott we were staying at so I think I was taking a shower or something and I come back and like my oldest son is uh both of them know who Joe is I think they know that I know him and uh I come back out and it's his special is on his new special is on and my sons are dying dying (laughs) laughing (laughs) that's and I'm sitting there in my head I'm like oh I might be in trouble if they repeat (laughs) some of this stuff around their mother. (laughs) Yeah. And then it gets done with the first one. And my middle son, or not my middle son, he's my middle child. My my youngest son, Tyler, he goes, Dad, we got to watch the first one. There was another one. I'm like, okay. (laughs) So we dive in. And it's like, then come to find out, without telling me, my son Tyler, like, listens to the Joe Rogan podcast while he's getting ready for bed. I'm like, what? So they're just exploring the world. And, like, Joe Rogan's their favorite guy. They die laughing. The stuff that that guy says, and I'm That's pretty awesome. sure his comedy is not for the 13 to 15 year old. <laughs> I'm like surprised that like a 13 year old kid would be into that, like listening to a podcast. Dying. I, I'd be just, like, I wasn't too into that stuff. They, uh, yeah, we well, didn't have podcasts, but I just like even like a talk show on the radio when we were kids. Like, man, I'd they're so used to, to the stuff, the the stuff that comes off devices. <laughs> like my son, my oldest son listens to music on YouTube. <laughs> in like you know, obviously you have iTunes and all that stuff. He goes to YouTube, and I don't know why he does it. And I, I can not barely keep track of the stuff they're doing. He's got the video, too, to watch, you know, maybe. I don't know. Music video. <sighs> I don't know. Which you don't get to see music videos anymore because it's not Why like do they make MTV. music videos anymore? I don't know. Like, they don't – where do you see them? Where do you watch them? On? I mean, like – Maybe that is why he's on YouTube. 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 I don't know. I mean, there's no, like – I mean, when we were growing up, it was like MTV was like a music video oh, it was the thing. Channel <laughs> MTV Cribs, The Real World. I remember. I think I watched the first at least eight seasons of The Real World straight. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I remember re- Real World, but that was like the beginning of the end of MTV of Kinda. like what it was before, it, like of music videos. I, I bet you I haven't seen MTV in ten years. I'd be amazed yeah, to see even, what's still on there. I don't even have a cable. I haven't paid for cable in my house forever. It's just like YouTube and yep. Netflix and stuff, pretty much. Yeah. So. uh where can people find you? Uh, uh, Not like physically on the thirty-second so- floor, Suite One Hundred Six <laughs> of the Venetian. I don't know. Ooh, good thing I'm putting this out on Monday. I mean, social media wise, <laughs> how can people follow you? Yeah, my name Jeff Provenzano with the little blue check mark. Yeah, I got, yeah, I get one of those. Big deal. Yep. So that's how people know. Yeah, but I don't think there's a lot of it Jeff helps Provenzanos. Like, yeah, my friends all say the blue check mark is really just if I want to send you know a girl a message on Instagram. That's what, then, what does that do? For then you? they then they're like, oh, he's got a blue check mark. He's he not, must be a nice guy. He must be a nice guy. He must not, you know, he he's not gonna, you know, he's not an axe murderer or something. I feel like that's, I don't know if that's not really what the check mark means. I don't think so. I think it. I, don't I know. don't think the check mark is you're not an axe. Everybody murderer. wants it though. You know, it's so funny. Like <laughs> everybody wants a check. Like, Why do you have a blue check? I want that. I'm like, did you just wake up one day? It was there. Yeah, yeah it was. The, yeah, it was just there. Like, you're kind of a big deal. Red Bull Air Force. <laughs> I've, you know, my my teammates are big deals. They don't have a blue check mark. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Where else can they find you? Just are you living on Instagram, or what else you got? Yeah, Instagram up? is a big one. I'm gonna try to um, get a YouTube thing going on. That's one of my things. The it's, number one video you need to post is your cliff strike. You, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm gonna write it down. I'll get my notebook <laughs> in a second. I'll definitely write that down. Right. The more this. embarrassing it is, the better. Throw it out there. Like, just yeah. post it. I, you know, I just felt bad because it's like, really, why I didn't want to post it. It's like this big Red Bull logo, smashing into a side of a cliff and dragging down it, and I'm like, but that stuff uh. happens. I was like, oh, I don't want like you know, but it happens. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, 
I won't name. I any, think it's time. I won't name any names. I've seen some other Red Bull canopies with some damage on them too. You know what the thing is? Nobody <laughs> reads captions though, right? Nobody reads. So I'll be like, five years ago, da, 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 you're and gonna post get messages, video. Jeff. Are oh my you god, okay? are you okay? Yeah. I'm like, I started it. It says five years ago. Start the video, yeah. so you need to create a bumper. Oh, and that's like right. Star Wars in a galaxy okay. far, far away, <laughs> five years ago, and let that be on the screen for like ten seconds. People are still gonna message. It's correct. Like, dude, are you okay? Oh my god. Yeah, it's correct. You will still get messages. Like, yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, right so on, man. I think we, uh, we'll we definitely sit down again in the I future. We could talk for days, we I'm could. sure. How I mean, long do you we, think we've been talking? I'm going to guess like an hour and a half. Hour and 35. All right. Perfect. That's a perfect yeah. like amount of time. Perfect. Boom. We're done.